What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live right now in the Cannabis community. And if you're watching us right now on YouTube, thank you so much for watching us on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We've got a great show for you today with Tanazi from Sacred Three Mushrooms. We're going to be talking about what he's been up to recently at various events. We saw him recently at the Dude Grows Cup and he's been to some other stuff. So we're going to be hearing all about that. And of course, we'll be touching on his great mushroom grow kits and much more. I'm sure we'll get into all kinds of fun things. But before we do that, I've got a couple shout outs that I need to get into. First off, shout out to our friends and our community. We've got a live stream. The live stream is going in uh, right now to the cannabis community. And we've got folks in there like Richard. So shout out to uh, our live stream community. If you want to be a part of that community and joining our live streams and you can uh, enter giveaways and all sorts of stuff, join us uh, in the cannabis app. Use the code Growers Love. Love, love, sorry, Growers Love in the Cannabis app. Search Cannabis in the App Store and use that code when you sign up, and that will give you 50% off your first month. Also, shout out to Terplock, the makers of Grove Bags. Here's a quarter pound Grove Bag. What this does is it replaces your jars. You harvest your weed, you dry it, and then you put it in, instead of in a jar, you put it into a bag just like this one. And this is gonna make it so you don't have to worry about burping or humidity levels or anything like that. You just throw it in the bar uh, bag and you just leave it alone, basically, and it'll cure your weed. So go to grovebags.com, use co code CANNABUS for 7% off your next order. And then lastly, shout out to our friend Tiki Madman at tikimadman.com and his website, tikiseeds.com. He's always got great sales. His latest, uh, his latest concoction is called Mr. Stinky. It says <laughs> Mr. Stinky Danky Fire. Um, and it's permanent marker times Tiki Lemon Cherry Sherbert. So permanent marker. I've been hearing about, about that one on the Instagrams. Have anything to... To, that you've heard about this one, Jr. Um, no, but I'm really excited to try it. Um, Tiki's putting out some uh, pretty amazing stuff, and uh, they're doing not only just the fruity flavors, but they're going back to some of the uh, OG kind of gassy, funky, and uh, uh, those kind of flavors as well. And another thing with Tiki is you're always going to probably pull some kind of color. You know, it's very oh, rare cool. that you see a offering from him that's just you know a green bud nice. so yeah hit up tiki he's got lots of stuff going on and uh, we'll try to get him on here real soon oh yeah so yeah thanks to our supporters and of course our community shout out to james and richard in the live chat right now but let's get into it today we have a return guest with tanazi from sacred three mushrooms we're talking about all things fungi like i said we're going to be talking and we're talking about the recent fungi conference in denver we're going to be talking about lady hyphy and much more so thank you so much for joining us this afternoon tanazi awesome dude glad to be back this is always fun thanks for having me uh, I think we got good things to talk about on this psychedelic wave that we're kind of surfing out here in Denver. So it's been fun, bro. And it's exciting to be on this and be a, a part of this forefront that's happening. Yeah, I'm pretty it's excited about it because we had a little safety meeting this a uh, few days ago. And we talked about this outward journey out into space and all the things that are going on with that. And then we also talked a little bit about that inward journey that humanity is going on with psychedelics. And so I think it's kind of awesome timing that we have you on to talk about uh, the conference and everything. But before we get into that, I'd kind of like for you to talk a little bit about uh, how you prepped for the Do Grows event and uh, talk a little bit about your experience there with the Do Grows Cup. Prepping like... To get getting ready those, for it and stuff? Yeah, getting those samples ready. Tell us about uh, that. Yeah, so we gave out, we packed up four, no, four, I can't remember now. It was four or 500 little bags of one gram mushrooms and give them away to everybody. I think we gave out like maybe 350 or so. We we're trying to give away a full pound, but uh, it's a lot of work building up to it, man, like getting prepared. And we used it kind of like a crash course because you know how these places could get in these conferences because we knew the 
psychedelic one was coming up and it's like when you bring your friends in who's never experienced the DGC cup or anything like that, they really don't know what's going on. And so I you also had my friends come to help be part of that so they could kind of get into the flow to like really handle like the big event we did at the conference center downtown. Yeah, but, uh, so that DG was just like a little mini tease compared uh, it to it was still it was still bigger than what we usually go to downtown. DGC is pretty big for us too. I mean, it's not no conference center hosted by the big heads, you know, but for what we we're able to pull in at these events, I feel like it's a great crash course to like experience this, especially behind the booth where you're right. engaging in, with people and constantly and it's spreading the word. Cause uh, here's what I, at the, at these events, DGC and stuff, well, you have to have people because you have so many people at the booth two people talking isn't enough like you and you have people standing off to the side trying to get in on that conversation but they're still standing off the side not being paid attention to so yeah if you're able that to, happens like, a lot put two people out in front of the booth kind of like working behind the people in front of the, on the table that you're yeah. talking to kind of like we're trying to make a system and design something like that yeah because it's it's more about I don't care if you buy anything. I just want to spend five minutes listening to me talk about what we're trying to do here. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It's and like a mixture. Was... Yeah. It's so interesting. Cause like what you're describing is like, it's, you're not just like trying to sell stuff, but it's almost like it's a trade show too. Cause you have to have that just like relationship building and education mm -hmm part of it too you know you, you like you right. uh, that's what i guess um you know on that note i guess shout out to you guys because your booth at the dude grows Com cup had so many different aspects of it it was interactive you had like some sort of game that you could play and you guys were selling stuff and there were different types of things that people could buy you know i thought that was really cool that you had all these different entry points and and all these different things so could you describe that to people because i'm sure there's many folks in our audience that weren't there so what um what, right what was this like mushroom booth like like for someone who's trying to imagine something like that so i've been to we've gone to the indo expos and i've been exposed to these booths and doing yeah. these events so just spectating really never really held it but now that i'm able to like really put my money into it and build these booths it's kind of a, a spectacular like spectacular type deal and it's like a circus it's loud i want bells and that you're talking about the wheel so if you came by and you bought so many of our products we you were able to spin our wheel and we were giving away free mushrooms free kits like everything was pretty legit man and it's just i want it to just be big and it's give everything away man i just want to give 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 you know because these mushrooms have just helped me so much man and i just want to share that as best yeah, as and i can I, and i think that interactive the booth, experience at the booth is uh is kind of like reminiscence of kind of the old days when it was popping at the events you know when you would go to trade shows and you would leave there with like bags of shit and you know, all these interactions with all these companies that were re really willing to share to get you on board and get you to believe, right, you know, kind of rock with their vibe, you know? <clears throat> right. I remember Indo Expos, man. I'd have to go take a load to the car. I got <laughs> yeah. so much free. I got so much free products yeah. from all the spectator or booths or whatever. And it's amazing, man. I, I just want to keep doing it. Uh, I mean, slowly, not not every weekend. Some people yeah. can hit this stuff every weekend, oh, bro. This takes yeah. this takes it out of me. When I sit there for standing for twelve hours and like conversation, conversation, yeah. conversation, that that takes a toll on me, man. I'm not able yeah. to. But if I'm able to maybe do like three or four big events and kind of get the word out there, I feel like we're doing pretty good. So well, tell us a little more about the conference, the uh, psychedelic science conference. Right. So we had that uh, June pretty good like 19th or something the 20th that is the biggest besides go participating in the indo expo like just walking through for the weekend this was the largest thing i've seen and it wasn't weed there was pretty much zero weed things there and it was all psychedelics and to be a part of something that i've never been to a psychedelic conference i know they've had them in 
uh, out there where you're at in the Bay Area. They have a lot in San Diego. Um, Detroit's held, held a lot of psychedelic shows, but this was the first one they've had here. And to be that and to see the things that I got prosecuted and fucking in trouble for in my youth and to see this come to light where doctors, lawyers, PhDs, like these scholars in the field of clinical studies and medical and all this therapeutics, the convert like it's a whole different realm of talking it to you and Joe Schmo growing shit in your closet for 20 years. It's a different conversation. Did right? Did they at all at uh, I mean, like I noticed when we first started, you know, kind of going into Emerald Cup towards the last of the years, they were like legalize, legalize. And then last year they were like fuck legalization, fuck legalization. So what was kind of the vibe of the communication as far as the legality and, and the uh, availability for fungi for the, you know, for the citizens. Right. So this is my opinion. Nobody, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not fucking part of some big corporation that's getting paid to push this or anything. This is my opinion, just a spectator of just seeing what was there. So shit ton of ketamine places because ketamine's already been push through you can go pay three thousand five thousand bucks and do your six sessions of ketamine or whatever and what they what i'm seeing from all these conversations for people is they basically have now have a built model off of the ketamine now as psilocybin mdma all these other ones come online and you're able to they're just going to it's just going to be another thing on the menu for you so you could go to that clinic Oh, what do you want to do for your three to five thousand dollars? You're gonna do psilocybin, you're gonna do ketamine. Yeah, you know, I see, I see big money coming in. And oh yeah. I, I was talking about this at my booth. I was like, I see y'all coming in, like big money. You're gonna charge people three to five thousand dollars to hold their hand on a five gram dose or something and that they can do in their bedroom alone. And worse yeah. than that, they're gonna synthesize it tell you that to get it organically and naturally is unsafe and then they're going to criminalize your ability to go out and access it in nature and we had a group on called decriminalize nature and we need to check in with those folks uh because they were talking about even some of the peyote regions uh down uh you know in the southern deserts that are uh getting infiltrated by big money and they're trying to bribe some of these tribes to basically let them come in and harvest off their land. Yeah, and so, right. you know, I think you kind of were one of the people, one of the first and only people I heard saying uh, that you didn't want legalization in Denver. And um, with, with it, what it, they had proposed, with what yes. they had offered. And can you talk a bit, a little bit about what went through and where you see uh, some of the limitations in that legislation? So, before this event, they dropped, uh, what do they call it, revisions when they re-regulate or whatever, they change to make the laws more refined. So they've, grow, they've got, they've actually, this is a good thing I, I think I read. This is my understanding is that there won't be any synthetics. It's not allowed. And you're not allowed to use a lot of uh, fuels or solvents that have a flashpoint above a certain like 100 Celsius or something crazy, which is pretty much anything that's a non-solvent. Um, I was going off course there, but these laws that they just dropped, it's called SB, I'm blanking, 130, something like that. And it's kind of, kind of doesn't really, def it's still gray area, right? Where it's clinical, but there's no, they're not allowing you to distribute. So you're not able, where's, dude, that's what was uh, at the show. It's a lot of gray line areas because you have liquid cultures and plates of genetics, which is fine, slightly, right? Because here's the thing, when they go to get you, is it going to be a microgram of psilocybin psilocin content within that plate, which, fuck, the bruise is blue. You could eat the whole plate, nothing's going to happen to you. But if you go to make trace amounts and start really like 
refining and see if there's any trace amounts and then charging people, that's fucked up. And so that's where these laws are going to have to still redefine. They're going to have to come and really just say, hey, liquid cultures are illegal or they're going to have to make their case, I'm sure. Right. And that's probably the only way they can do it is calling it or they're going to say you can't have no more than so many micrograms or whatever trace amounts of this compound and then you're illegal. Mm -hmm. We had a shop here in Portland recently, I'd say within the year, uh, that opened up retail and they were just killing it, lines out the door. And of course, that only lasted for about a month before they're looking at, I don't know, it was over 30 felony charges. Wow. So it's uh, decriminalized here in the state of Oregon, but it's uh, still pay to play. And if right. you don't pay... Right. You know, if you don't pay to play, you're going to pay with your freedom. So, you know, it's still kind of and rough for a lot of people. That's why I want to push these, talk to people about growing your own mushrooms to get away. You don't have to go to these clinics. You can do this and fall, listen to me talk about doing my five, 10 grams. And then maybe you can do it yourself or have your wife hold your hand while you do it or a friend. It's not that hard. It's five grams ain't nothing. Anybody right. can do this. You don't have to have a clinical person there saying, hey, your heart rate's fine. Your heart rate's good. <laughs> right, and, right. Or even in a worst case scenario in Port or here in Oregon, uh, you have to do it in a facility and there's cameras in the room. I mean, who's going to feel see, comfortable having uh, an experience like that, knowing that, you know, I'm on camera. It's all being recorded. Yeah. Well, and yeah, none of that stuff is going to be cheap, right? Like as someone who has the skills or the like meets the requirements to watch you learn, like or and administer this experience, they're not going to be cheap, you know, per on an hourly basis. You know what I mean? So the whatever you're going to have to pay as the patient for that multiple hour long experience or whatever it's going to end up being, I'm sure that's not going to be that attainable. Um, the other thing I wanted to add on uh, that you mentioned, Tanazi, that may, you made me think of, you were talking about how there's various um, psychedelic conferences out there and whatnot, people talking about this stuff. I live out in, you know, Silicon Valley or like in the San Francisco Bay Area. And yeah, there are, um, you know, people talking about this stuff. Because a lot of the people that work in tech, they do psychedelics. There was a an article recently in like Wall Street Journal or New York Times or something like that that was talking about how Elon Musk does like ketamine and uh, other various people in, in the industry. They do drugs. And so a lot of those same people and their investors and whatnot, they're trying to now get into this industry. And so just watch out for that because those people... They don't really, they just, this is obviously they like doing mushrooms and they have fun doing it and whatever, but also they're here to make shit tons of money. That's what they're here for. Right. So just, I just want to keep like, as much as those people, uh, it's kind of interesting that they're getting into it or whatever. Just be wary of them too, because we've seen how they approach other technology. It's all extractive, you know, it's just how can they make themselves the most money and give themselves the most power. It's not necessarily how can we give something to the broader community. And we yeah. saw that this in the is... cannabis. We saw yeah. that in the cannabis community. I mean, yeah. look at what all that legalization and all that movement and all that time and all that effort that everybody did. And we all paid several prices and now it's mm -hmm. just been handed over. We all you know, have to do what we have to do. And it's kind of fucked off. Right. But That's on what a I was pushing. Note, <laughs> tell, us about some of the, tell us about some of the music and the vibes at that. Because uh, I heard Flaming Lips uh, played yeah. the, the event. I don't know if you can see it back there, but I got a poster. Oh, nice. Flaming, you ever watch the Netflix series, Have a Nice Trip? No. They were across the way from me. Oh, but wow. they held That's on. Awesome. They held on this concert. I think it was on Tuesday. No, well, maybe Thursday. Either way, but I did not make it, bro. But I got a cool poster about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that would have been a great, great show, honestly. I really did want to go. It was just 
when you have six dogs, it took me an hour and a half to get downtown. I woke up at 5 a.m., got there at like 6.30, did 12 hours of showtime, and then I have to feed myself and get back home and feed my dogs. And it's like, yeah, there's no way I could have made There's no way I could have made it. But man, so that went down one night, other shows. I think they had concerts at Meow Wolf. So Meow Wolf had a thing. I don't know if you guys have seen a Meow Wolf in Vegas or Santa Fe it. or anything. It's a crazy ass building with a bunch of, weird when you walk stuff. through it, it's like, yeah, you walked into a different fucking world. Like everything's weird. There's so many hidden holes and weird creatures and things that you just walk around and like find hidden things in doorways. And it's like a maze. It's cool to trip. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, they, uh, if you were able to attend a psychedelic science, your badge got you into the Meow Wolf. I don't know if it's discounted or free, but I think they had concerts there, which they do. So if you do, actually, I didn't know this. If you do go to Meow Wolf, pay attention. They have concerts there. Don't only just pay to go see Meow Wolf and walk through the building. There's like little concert venues inside. There's like, I think there's three of them. So That's you can cool. like maybe oh, see, cool, a, man. see a yeah, show. That's really cool. And so as a fanboy, were there some people that you got to meet and, and interact with? Yep. I got to see Paul Stamets. Uh, I shook Dennis McKenna's hand. I had Alex Gray sign a book I had. Wow. Um, and George Jones was right next to me. So I got, I didn't really talk to him much though. He was signing stuff. Um, Hamilton Pharmacopia, the, wow. the wife, oh, yeah. the wife and the wife and Lady Hyphy got to hang out with him in line for lunch. <laughs> That's cool. Talk to him. He's really cool. cool. I like him. Really cool. Yeah. I wish yeah, I got he... to meet him. <laughs> but it was it's it's weird to want to like I did I right ran up to Dennis McKenna and it was just an awkward conversation because he's like he's in passing, he's trying to go somewhere, yeah. and you're just like trying to yeah. spit out your three seconds of like, hey, I yeah. just like want to meet you. Like, hey. So it's kind of awkward. And so it's kind of that way with everybody, I feel like. And it's kind of because everybody's in going somewhere. Not everybody's just there to like shake hands. I feel yeah. like. Does that make sense? Yeah, they yeah, usually have somewhere to go or somewhere else to do, you know, whatever. Or they're just looking yeah. to chill and get lunch or something like that. So you don't want to like bug right, out. I don't want to be that. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy that's like pestering and bothering somebody that doesn't want to be bothered. Yeah, so I'm yeah. very timid. I'm very timid to like go and introduce myself. Yeah, shy. I hear, like. <laughs> I hear you. Well, um, we're now about like 25 ish minutes or so into this interview. Um, I'd love to um talk about uh real quick or or so just introduce people to the concept of your kit. If if people haven't watched one of our episodes with you before, they're not familiar with what you guys do. Um, I think this would be a good opportunity to just talk a little bit about what you guys are doing and what and you know how the things that you create or provide help people grow at home. Right. So the best, the best phrase to, or quote to sum this up, it was the Chinese proverbs. If you teach a man to fish, he feeds himself for a day. If you give him a fish, he only eats for the day. And that's kind of how I present these kits to people. It's like, I'm teaching you in this setup in a small little, contained everything with everything you need and then you do it on that level and grow your own mushrooms and follow along the steps and everybody's having great success you have more mushrooms people don't even know what to do with them they're telling me how to how do i store these <laughs> and then that's what i want to do is like teach you to grow your own medicine here so that Say, because you're not everybody's rich enough to go pay three thousand fucking dollars to go do a session of something because you feel safe because it's a doctor thing. Some people, you got the money, fucking do it. Whatever, if it makes you feel safer and it's do it. But I grew up and all the people don't have money like that, bro. You don't yeah. have fucking three thousand bucks to go throw at a doctor or something. You hardly have fucking enough money to pay the bills. So if I can present this hundred dollar kit. And I just teach you everything I can teach you. I'm giving you more than a hundred dollars worth of information. Like I answer emails, 
daily like i'm constantly just these aren't just i don't even answer just email questions you get more when you when you deal with sacred three it's more than just yes no this is what you do i'm i'm paragraph paragraph talking to people about how the mushroom has helped me and what it does for me and when i what i what i take and what happens and it's almost like psychiatry type conversations with people about the mushroom how the mushroom is your psychiatrist or your guider and i'm just kind of facilitating what's happening to me and they're experiencing the same things and if my kit can provide that for people dude and i think i've, I've already seen it's i like these events because i'm face to face people now and i'm actually getting more feedback about what it's what it's like for them on it because they're yeah i don't see that i don't when i'm sitting here at the house working constantly i don't see that as much except through right. emails but when you get out there and you're just like man people really like are getting help from this and they're doing it and it's working for them very well and that makes dude, i mean that's what i want i want you to grow your own mushrooms and be self-sustaining to do micro doses and therapeutic doses whenever you want, if you want it, if you seek it, I don't want to push it on you, but if you seek it and cause I feel like there's something here, man, this is a tool. Mushrooms are a tool, bro. And if you eat enough to scare yourself, that's a traumatic experience. And you're just like the taboo at that point. People who've heard them horror stories growing up and all this stuff and their friends freaked out. Set setting dosage, you took the wrong dose around the wrong people and freaked out. And like that's traumatizing. And then you never want to do it again. Yeah. And it's like we need to break that. That needs to be broken because you, if you look at it as just a bad drug and you had a bad time, as more you use the tool wrong. And that's what you fucked yourself up. That's more like what happens. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, I yeah, think not, a you lot, didn't take the. I think there's a lot. You didn't of take the tool. tool. I think you kind of said it correctly with taboos. I think a lot of people have these ideas in their mind, like if I do this and I have this horrible experience, I'll stay in it forever. Or uh, if I do just a small amount, I'll trip out for ten days. Or you know, right. it's all about a lack of education and all these old stories of, of programming that we all receive through, you know, your generation, I think was D.A.R.E. generation and, you know, whatever. Yep. So it's like we have those cor correlate correlations with other things like cannabis in that we have to break down a lot of those uh, or what we call educate and deconstruct. Uh, or deconstruct and educate whichever one you want to do but anyways the point is is that we have all these barriers already set up that we have to crash in order just to get people to open their hearts to the idea once we can crash that stuff down we open their hearts and then that's when they can find the right educated tools and information to allow them to achieve their desired goal as and, and your kits are one of those things. And I would like to transition to my experience with your kit and um, also help people kind of uh, walk through that process. Uh, first, I wanna say your videos and the information you have on the shared drive, I don't know if that's still a thing, uh, mm -hmm. super, super helpful because I'm able to pull up the video, pause it at the moment I need to pause it, do what I'm supposed to be doing and then go on to the next phase. And so I was right. really successful with, uh, you know, uh, inoculating my grain and I got my mycelium to grow. Um, and then I found myself in the dry of cold of winter and in my house and in my living area, I have a very limited space where I could do this. And so I chose to do my veg room where I thought I could keep the right parameters set up for it. Um, but what I found is my humidity was crashing and I wasn't able to keep a successful uh, process going. So now moving forward, I've uh, added a humidifier to the room 
So now I can have my humidity set at whatever level I need to be set at. And I can set my temperature now. So I have that dialed in. Uh, now my thing is uh, the darkness that's required uh, for the caking and or for the first two weeks. And then also the darkness for uh, you need for your mycelium growth in your jar. So can you kind of give people strategies that are in my situation so they can overcome that? Right. Especially a winter. Um with the jar colonizing on part one, I have had people in Australia, as a matter of fact, she took the jar, wrapped it in a towel, and just laid it on top of her hot water heater. And the towel thickness, I mean, I'm sure you don't want to stick it right on there, right? Because I think some hot water heaters probably at 130, 125 at the top, if maybe not, with installation. But if you wrap that jar in a towel, you're able to stick it on top of your refrigerator, on top of your hot water heater. These things kind of stay pretty warm. And if you just wrap it up and keep the distance, does that make sense? Like a buffer? You wrap the jar enough that it stays enough off to the hot water heater to just keep the perfect temp. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like if I'm in then, an apartment, I'm in an apartment okay. and I've got, or even in an air room like I'm at, and I've got my humidity and stuff, and I'm trying to achieve that dark cycles because in my bedroom, I'm at 18 and six. That's always the cycle. Okay. So, and I need total darkness for uh, fruiting. Let's, the let's rethink that. Total darkness. So I don't think you need total darkness. Um, my totes are literally in a closet in the next room. There's not even a door or blanket on the closet. It's just open. And I've got the tote sitting on top of a shelf wrapped with a blanket and towels. So I know it's not air, like super solid dark in there, you know. So I don't, you don't have to keep, I mean, dark is perfect, right? Throw it and wrap it in some towels, throw it in the corner of a closet. That's fine. But I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be complete darkness still wrap okay. it up as best you can still wrap it up as best you can but it doesn't have to be like airtight dark so um then, sorry ahead, Sam. i'll throw in because so when i got your tub a few years ago i when i i got one i had issues with moisture in the in the substrate where mine kind of like dried out and cracked it kind of seemed like or something mm -hmm. like that um, so I guess while I, let's say I've, I've got my tub, I've wrapped it up in my closet or wherever, how do I keep that right moisture? Cause it, I just seem to battle with like too much and too little. Like sometimes there was so, just like way too much water build up. It seemed like, and that can, that kind of screwed me over once too. When I like overcompensated. On the, on the jars, the moisture is contained within the jar. You never have to worry about that. That could sit anywhere, man. Out and just wrap it up, you're good. On part two, what you're talking about is getting um, the when you get these kits, my kits are all you're talking maybe older ones. Uh, they may have not been as good quality on the manure as we have now, but our moisture in the manure is fill capacity and it's been pasteurized. So when you do make part two and you go to put that guy in the closet in the dark or wherever no problem at all it should never dry out if it's dried out that means that you probably have you waited on the kit i've had some people actually tell me they've never even opened the kit and they bought it a year ago oh okay. it's like okay this is where you okay could have what you're talking about where the substrate may have been sitting too dry 60 or days 90 days and dried out a little bit more than normal so that when you made your tote all you all you would really have to do I don't know how you would really tell, though, that it's dried out more than it needs to be. If you have an older kit, here is a do it. If you have an older kit that's not fresh, as soon as you get it, you would miss the fuck out of it. Say that you have a six-month-old kit and it's been sitting there pasteurized and any type of manure, anybody's manure, and you put it together, I would probably take a mist bottle, soak the side of the walls and soak the top of it, and then shut it up. But with the kits I have now, when they get to you, you should have no issue. You're going to have 
condensation everywhere. And you will even see if you put that liner in there, there's going to be like a half inch puddle of water on the outside of that liner and your tote. That's perfect. That's what you want. That's, you should see that. That means I have enough moisture in there. You don't have to open it. You don't have to mist it. Do any moisturizing. You just, if anything, you just flip the top of the lid and fan it out once a day. I've, I hardly ever fan my totes out. It's a rare okay. thing for me to fan my totes. Okay, so I've, for me, I'm going to be going for that first uh, two weeks of my cake. <laughs> Uh, a toe, your toe inside a larger toe, uh, okay. so that I can give it what it needs. Um, What's your temperatures what, going to be? Uh, my temperatures are going to be seventy. I'd probably say seventy-eight, pretty much twenty-four-seven at nighttime. It'll get down to maybe seventy-four-ish, but this is going to be in Perfect. my bedroom. And then perfect. So I would just be... wrap that wrap that guy in a towel, stick yeah. it in the corner. Or you said you're gonna put in a tote. Put it in the tote. Tote in the tote. I would wrap actually. I would wrap it in a towel and then put it in the tote. I say this because I'm not saying you got a bunch of gnats or whatever, but that one little fucking gnat you see in your grow. If it gets inside your tote, I have seen. I'm not. A, does it happen all the time? A lot of people are growing fucking great in their uh, veg tents and stuff or grow budding tents. But it, if the gnat can get in there and it is a perfect environment for that gnat, bro. And I have opened up a tote and <laughs> billions and billions of fucking gnats just <laughs> like, like it'll this is the most insane shit I've ever saw. I was like, whoa. Like biblical. <laughs> so if you are growing around your ganja and other plants, be cautious of bugs you can experience that <laughs> okay so then what are my uh air exchanges and burping procedures at that point i would first run i wouldn't yeah. even open it i wouldn't even really? open it Tot mm -mm. totes shut her down yep two Let's weeks see. So, so yeah. I'm, this is awesome. I'm really excited. I need to buy one of these new kits then. Cause it really seems <laughs> like you've ironed it out. So, um, so, okay. So I've, I've closed it up and then do I just keep it closed until my first, um, harvest or my first flush or yeah. Can, can you walk me through pretty much pretend I'm a new, so, yeah. Right. So part two is where we're going to take the tote, your colonized grains and manure. We're going to put it all together in the liner. And when you put the lid on it, I've actually in the new kits, we have micro pour tape. Because the only holes on this kit are going to be around the lid. And with the small enough blueprint that these totes are, you don't have to have side holes. Like how the bigger totes, you have to cut holes in the sides for air and stuff. This tote and that lid is so loose that the footprint's small enough that the air is, I guess, getting enough in there to do this. So that micro pour tape, we wrap, we wrap around the top of the lid. It kind of makes a seal temporary, right? And that's only for colonizing. Because while we got the substrate and everything just put together, nothing is colonized. And so it's at its most vulnerable point of contamination. Oh. So then we wrap and we wrap it up tight, right? And then you put your seal on it with that micro pour tape and it sits in your dark for two, two weeks. And in that two weeks, the mycelium colonizes the substrate. And now we have a one cell barrier wall, basically, around everything that is protecting itself. So it's less likely to get contamination because now it's protected itself. So after two weeks of being in the dark, we're colonized. We now bring it out to the light and we can take that tape off. And it just sits there and I've got windows cracked about like that right there. I've got a wire shelf right here in the other room totes on it and that is the only light source that i use you're muted nice and that's not even direct light that's what i was trying to say yeah that's yep. like indirect light basically that's really cool. indirect light you never want so i have a south facing window so the sun rotates and at no point during the day at any time of the day does the sun ever shoot in and hit those totes because that's 
100% fuckery right there. Oh, really? <laughs> you'll, uh, spoil, you'll, uh, you'll spoil a tote. You'll heat it up real hot because the sun just cooks it and it'll uh, yeah. ferment and fuck up your mushrooms. That's good to know. That's good to know. So, so now in the, there's kind of an industry kind of forming around that whole thing. And there are folks offering uh, lights that are supposedly uh, spectrum made and intensity made. Uh, right. for fruiting mushrooms so say i'm in a condo and i've got my bathroom hooked up and i'm wanting a light that i can use do you recommend even getting that or just flip on the light switch and go for it i used to say 6500 kelvins but i just ran a run with <clears throat> 6500 kelvin leds cheap china ones yeah and it seems to have Stun, like not stunted but not as much production i don't okay. have as many fruits not as full of flushes so i'm thinking spectrum could be a part on this and it seems like the 6500 kelvin the ones i got they direct and more like indirect sunlight so i've got keith from black cell market he's coming on he's trying to help us figure some stuff out with this because you want like a you want a 6,500 Kelvin, but you don't want high heat. And I guess there's, I'm not a fucking light expert. I might get this wrong. Right, but something, <laughs> something about 6,500 Kelvin is putting off of some type of heat yeah. that it acts like indirect lighting. And I think that was the issue here. So um, I would use CFL com or a compact fluorescent. A CFL bulb would probably be good right now. If you can't. At what wattage? The window. About 100 watts. Really? 100 watt. Okay. okay. Is that big? I have some stuff on some. Let me see this. Makes sense. I so, yeah, I wonder if that light that you were talking about is like giving off some sort of radiation or something like that, or infrared light, yeah, or something like right. that. Right. Like that's heating it up or whatever. And I'm thinking, so we. It looks like a blurple light. I'm seeing people run, so I'm guessing it's some type of. 3500 Kelvin with some Keith will have to explain it better to me, but he's going to add something to those spectrums and make it of some type of 3500 to 6500 Kelvin without some type of white light heat penetrating stuff. Whoa. I That's all for light science guys to figure out, right? That's cool. That right. I was excited to see him. Uh, I was excited to see him at the Dude Grows Cup with you guys. And yeah. just, it's cool to see, you know, the crew forming Voltron and uh, doing awesome stuff. I guess on that note, in terms of great teams, um, you know, one of the stars of the show I felt like at the Dude Grows Cup for you guys was was Lady Hyphy. So can you touch on uh, who is Lady Hyphy? And yeah, what was she contributing to the whole show at, at the Dude Grows Cup? So Lady Hyphy has come on board and she is helping out on the genetic side, which is fruity spores. She's got credentials and like clinical laboratory scientists and actually has went to school for intense stuff like medical lab or whatever. So this is kind of easy for her to roll into. And she has fallen in love with the mushrooms and taken off. And you can see her beautiful artwork on those agar plates that we had there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys got to stop by, but if you go to fruityspores.com, you'll see there's plates, liquid cultures, whatever genetic form that you want besides spores is the way where she's uh, giving them out that way. And she's just uh, heading up that department, man, and taking control. And, and so our each, it's been good. To me, it looked like each one of those plates were almost like a thumbprint and that each one was different you know no one was the same no one of them was the same right and that's the fun of the genetics right to see them rope out and see thickness and monoculture and like you see them you'd explain this way better but you can see the different formations of them when they grow and, it's, and i i want to say that they spiral out they have a nice, beautiful spiral sometimes. And I'm like, is that the spiral? Are they picking up the spiral of the earth, a rotational pull to make that? <laughs> That'd be fun. Right? Yeah, it, I mean, it looks really cool. Yeah. 
Very interesting. It's so but, one uh, about she's... some of the more uh, exotic uh, uh, varieties that you're seeing now, like the Enigma. Can you? Because I mean, it, uh, you're not going to have a a plate like that for the Enigma, would you? We do. So that's the only way you can get an Enigma is clone only because it doesn't drop spores. And that's she's actually going to start breeding because. Um, when we're talking about these mushrooms. Let me go on a little spiel here. Go. It's you're you're going on thresholds, is what I'm understanding. And if you can get a certain amount of psilocybin psilocybin in your body, you experience these breakthroughs, and you have these interdimensional experiences and cleansings. And not every mushroom is going to do that. And that's kind of I'm going to go through every fucking mushroom and tell you, okay, five grams doesn't work. To get there, you need eight of this one. This one, you need 10. This one, you need five. And with, she's going to try to start breeding Lady Hyphy so that, because the most potent ones right now are the ones that they've kind of bred with the albino penis envies, which is kind of like Jack Frost, your Enigmas up there, Pearly Gates, Yetis, Cat Casper's up there with some potencies. And if we're able to breed for these more potent ones like the Enigmas, that means I can get a rest. You won't have to eat. 10 grams to get this experience when you can eat probably if you get a fucking hard gnarly one you could probably go down to four grams i've only gone down to five five on penis envy is the lowest i've gone and had a experience and i think that's that's where i want to like define this and i want to get a tester and i'll test all my shit so we know that if you have a mushroom that's this potent you, we know automatically you only have to eat this much to experience this. And if I can make a recipe for everybody, because I think that's the worst part, right? Is that you're going to eat mushrooms experience and want to experience this breakthrough and religious experience and you do it and it doesn't work because you didn't eat the right mushroom enough of it because of the concentrations, right? And I think that's way fucking scarier than actually going through with the experience. So like to just trip your balls off on four grams, I feel as a, can be a little bit more uneasy and squirmy than if I was to just push through with the five or six and break through. That's you, interesting. You, you, it's interesting. You, you haven't that. hit because you haven't hit a threshold. And I don't know if everybody's yeah. body's different. What like it doesn't go off body weight. It could go off of you, your chemical makeup, your heavy metals you have in your body, your your diet your receptors firing that could play a part and like if i'm able to talk about this on the shows and say i did this my last meal was here i ate these all within 15 minutes at this time and break it down i feel like there's more of a guide for people well i think that's going to be a big part of that whole evolution of of that space is people such as yourself that are going to help people learn how to guide and help people educate them on what to offer to the people that they're interacting with and trying to help at the end of the day. Uh, right. one thing we don't want to hurt people because we don't want to hurt people. We don't want to say, yeah. hey, eat five yeah. grams and this right. dude just flips the fuck out. And it's like you never right. experienced what you're trying to tell or talk about. Yeah, yeah. I could say the That's... same thing for RSO and cannabis. I mean, Finding yes, that, sir. finding, dialing that in can be an uncomfortable experience, but I just one... had my friend last week. I was fucking, I ate probably a hundred milligrams and I gave him a little fucking corner bin, a little pinch of some edibles I got from DGC cup. Yeah. Dude was just fucking dry. He even barfing everywhere that wow. night. Wow. Was yeah, it like some people? <laughs> Yeah, well, it was, it was a black <laughs> little soul thing because the guy who nah, it was out, some it was rice krispies like treats a thousand milligrams yeah no nah, i wouldn't have done him. that to him i just I ate half half I think one. he probably <laughs> ate he probably ate 10 or 5 milligrams but i'm saying yeah. like what you're saying people are very sensitive to that they have yeah. a bad time a bad yeah. trip yeah. for sure now in our industry or in the cannabis community i would say uh concentrates came online and it really put a different emphasis on flour. And so concentrates and all this started becoming the rave. And they're saying, I saw art, 
people now where Gen Z pretty much only wants to do vapes and edibles and they smoke very little flour. And so now <laughs> in the in the fungi community, uh, we have what we're calling the goo uh, come online. And that's basically the RSO version of, uh, you know, of psilocybin and psilocin. So uh, how, uh, how do you see that impacting the fruiting world uh, and, and, and that sort of thing with the goo I, coming online? I am all for it, man. I'm for extractions on this stuff. <clears throat> I don't want it to be goo, though. It could be better, just like we make DMT. <laughs> It can be like DMT and be a crystal, a salt alkaloid. If you want to see some beautiful pictures, check out Miralux. Miralux on Instagram. They're a German company doing testings and stuff. They actually have test kits so you can test your own drugs. But what was I saying? Miralux. <laughs> for good, for good pictures. Yeah. Um, I was actually, I, guys, I lost it on that one. <laughs> no worries. I, I wanted to ask you, um, cause we're running out of time. I did want to ask you real quick for some quick tips. I was just, um, while you guys were chatting, I was looking up, uh, fruity spores or your friends over at fruity spores and, um, there's syringes that are options and there are several different, um, like strains that I can pick from if I'm a noob, what are the strains that I should be looking at? Because pretend I'm a I'm a noob to this whole thing, and I'm not necessarily looking to like trip my balls off. I'm more just like trying to ease into this thing. You know what I mean? I don't. Right. Wanna, yeah, yeah. So the way I describe it to people, we don't have pictures up yet. I'm getting to that. We will have pictures eventually. But the way I describe it to everybody at the shows is if you are looking for a micro dose or a mild trip like you're not looking for hardcore things you just want to have fun and eat a gram go to a concert or just help yourself a little bit i guess yeah right maybe not have a hardcore penis envy but like a normal so what i describe people is like if you think white stem brown cap your normal looking cubensis if you held it up to anybody they're going to say that's a psychedelic mushroom they're going to know that one i feel like all those are relatively in the same realm right golden teachers and it's going to be the ones that are pretty much in that region of where they were found like the thailand is a kosamui there's a orissa indias that's from india there's some georgia mushrooms and all white stem brown cap they found found in cow fields and stuff like that that's your normal mild mellow mushroom and then when you start messing with albinos or penis envy, penis looking varieties or mutants like the Enigma where it turns real white and it's or blue. Blues, the more blue it is, the more potent it is. The bluer, the better. <laughs> but, and that's kind of like how I describe people. It's like, if you're looking for a normal cubensis, that's what you should look for. But if you're looking for hardcore things, that's where the albinos and the penis envies and and these other crazy breeds there's a lot of good cups magic mike magic Maiko, and trip team family i think willie Maiko. i don't know if he's involved they're doing uh that's why i want a tester but they are able to send in tests like they're doing cups basically for mushrooms potency levels and you're able to see these entries and what they're producing and it's i'm watching them as I know what the weed has done, I'm watching him saying, well, last time that, that was grown by him and that was more potent. Oh, last time that was grown by him and it's more potent. So I'm like, is this the same shit as weed? Right. You put shit, shit in, you get shit out, you put in good yeah, inputs, you get bet. good I stuff. Would I would and bet. I'm thinking this is the same thing, bro. So when you grow in my stuff, we have manure and stuff. Now maybe with us, you grow this variety that we got here in my manure i can talk to you about the same fucking potency levels in my eyes we're just fucking has to be close right but if you're growing in cocoa core the same stuff is probably going to be different another reason why i want to test her so i want to do side by sides and prove that i'm just i'm just speculating talking crap right now but i mean i want data points i want to <laughs> yeah, prove but you know what 
like me, I'm thinking, you know, you, you know, there's all these cannabinoids and they all play this entourage thing. But with with mushrooms, is that a thing or is it basically psilocin that gets converted to psilocybin or is it I, or is it the other way? Psilocybin that's converted to psilocin and that's it. I mean, that's all there is. To no, it. I think it's going to break down farther once we get deeper. And that's the only only thing I like about these medical clinical things operating is that they are going to dissect this thing like the cannabinoids. They right. Did. You've already got the criminalized nature guys came on. They introduced the two new ones to me when I watched it with you guys. You have the psilocin, psilocybin, and then they talk about two beta cysteines. All right. So there's now four tryptophans, and I'm sure there's going to be some other ones. And so maybe that's where the trips are different. What right? does that mean? I don't understand what you just said, the four tryptophans. Uh, tryptophans. So it's like you're talking psilocybin, psilocin are the most two common, right? Okay. And then now they've got beta cysteine. I want to say they call it one beta cysteine two. I don't know if that's even correct, do? but it's, it's another tryptophan that we're uh, not familiar with. And I don't know. Crazy. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. All this stuff is coming online. They're going to start saying, dissecting out more tryptophans, most likely. That's especially with different varieties. I, know that I saw an article this week that they say that the scientists have located the part of your brain that gives you your out-of-body experience and so that'd I'm, be interesting i'm curious i want to him to see. hook me up <laughs> i asked the chick I, there was actually a chick chick who worked at this neuro place for ketamine and she says that she tests people's brains while they're on ketamine and different drugs i said have you ever done it on somebody on 10 grams of mushrooms and she's like, no. And I was like, I would love to see what my brain looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh? That's yeah. That's crazy. Because well, you've, seen, you've seen them, like the little brain scans. Yeah. But how yeah, much I've are they that. eating? They don't say how much they ate. Right. I think it's a fucking probably little amount. amount. Yeah, probably small. Yeah, the Tam integration on uh, Instagram, uh, he was talking about how, like, as we kind of journey through life, as we have these moments of maybe uh, what we would call uh, trauma, I guess, uh, those create fragments in our memory systems, in our brains, and our cognitive abilities. And he's saying that the psychedelics are kind of like the equivalent to defragging your hard drive back in the day. It breaks up all those fragmented moments and kind of bleeds it all into one so you have more of a central flow of your memory system and your cognitive cognitive abilities. I love that. That is a fucking great analogy. Thanks. That's I would exactly... love to take credit for it, but yeah. it's, uh, it's Mount <laughs> Pan Psychedelic Integration on Instagram. Uh, he does kind of like daily things where he just says that, you know, I think he mixes a lot of like philosophy and psychology in with psychedelics and he really has touched kind of my heart in a profound way hell yeah well um, sounds like he knows what he's talking about so tanazi we're gonna get uh our last couple of questions in with you but before we do mm -hmm. that uh shout out to everyone watching we've got a bunch of people in the community that have been watching on our live stream like voodoo who's down in brazil who's been watching tonight it's awesome so shout out to our Cannabuzzers down in Brazil. He was talking about the zebu mushrooms that they find out in the in the fields in Brazil. That awesome. You can, See, yeah. that'd be awesome to like get those. Like, I see. I met a guy down there, and I can't remember the company. So a lot of cool booths were here, and I talked to this guy who went down to Mexico and he collects all these different from mushrooms from the wild, and he's kind of doing a database, like a data data log all this stuff and it's like pretty intense yeah but that'd be yeah cool, here are, where i'm at in the northwest here just in the astoria oregon area it's an epicenter for i think we got at least like six to seven different uh varieties and one of them is the azorescence which is you know that's that's kind of like the one of the trophies of the wild exotic i haven't ever taken a lot of those have you uh, I know someone who might have sent some to you, but I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> yeah, I never ate a big dose, though. I'd be curious to see. 
Okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so yeah, shout out to everyone in the community. We got Grow Coast, uh, Crazy Pop Mom, Psych, Psych Doctor, and many others in the chat. So if you want to be part of that community, search Cannabis in the App Store, or go to cannabis.app in the browser, and use our code Growers Love for 50% off. And we also wanted to shout out our shop at shop.cannabis.app. We've got hats and mugs and t shirts and even posters that you can get. So um, check that out at shop.cannabuzz.app. But um, our last couple questions for you, um, uh, Tanazi, was at the very least, uh, are there other events on the horizon that you're thinking about that people could see you at? Or what's, um, are, do you have things kind of on your mind for the future? So um, there's a lot of cool ass events coming up. I won't make them make it to all of them. Uh, the ones in Denver Ooh, psych psychon i want to say so if you look up any psychedelic i don't have i should have made a list i don't have those i will be there most likely at any denver one but cool ones that are coming up especially your area you have in the engine expo i want to say that's in la is in the engine expo then you have uh, awaking consciousness is coming in july I do, and it's in LA as well. Then uh, Vegas, they have Psycon. I'm trying to think of other names. Just check out Awakening Consciousness, Psycon. Um, I believe that's it. Nice. On those. But there's a California, Vegas, and Denver ones happening. Do videos usually come out of those things, like, you know, panels or whatever that end up on YouTube or something? Um, I, so I'm hoping that the, the speakers are right. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, and I'm wondering, so if you look at Paul Stamets, most recent one, the people who watched it said it's basically the same and uh-huh. it's, the uh, <clears throat> it's not the one from the psychedelic conference, but it's one from uh, March that he had done where he talks about his new mushroom that he found and stuff. But, um, Medically Fit took some great, if you go to Medically Fit's YouTube channel, he took some great videos for the booth for Sacred oh, Three yeah, and, did a, and, he, and, and he did a great walk around where he walked around a booth to show you the booth and talk to some of the people. Great conversation. So if you want to see like the event and walk around and see what booths look like, you can see it through his camera. He took a lot more footage than I was able to. Nice. And then and I saw you. Oh. Sorry, sorry, Q. I saw you. I just one last thing. I saw you put up a post about the uh, rap, uh, the guy who was going around and rapping at every booth. Can you talk a little bit about the rapping uh, psychonaut? Yeah, the fun guy. I uh, we did Is not get. Name? Yeah, the fun guy. I believe his name was. We kind of messed that footage up. Because it was recorded on a live stream, and the last of it was all blurry and choppy because of the connection. It didn't work out. But this dude was rolling around in an Amunita outfit with a little boombox. And then the Sacred 3 one, he didn't have his boombox going. He just custom made a Sacred 3 rap right there on the go. And then, but earlier in the sh- or the events, he'd walk around with his boombox and just like be freestyling about whatever yeah. the hell was in front of him. And it was <laughs> amazing to be able to yeah. like just freestyle like that and roll yeah. through and just talk about what's happening in front of you. I think that's a special talent. Oh, oh man, yeah. He was yeah. amazing. He was amazing. And I saw him on other people's footage too. And he would just roll up to their booth and just start breaking it down just based on what he could see with his eyes. And it was phenomenal. Right. I thought he did an amazing job. He did great at ours because he came over there without the boom box. And he's like, what do you want me to rap about? And I said, feed him into fish. And like all these little things that he threw in the rap. And he like did it well, bro. Yeah, Very good. good. <laughs> good times. Nice. I um, my, One of my favorite freestylers like that is uh, Harry Mack. So if you look yeah. up Harry Mack on YouTube, it's yeah, he's uh, really good. I would just like getting blitzed and watching those videos there. They'll <laughs> blow your mind. But um to if you're interested in everything that nazi has been talking about today, make sure to go to sacred3mushrooms.com and you can use the code cannabis for 10% off your order. 
Uh, so huge shout out and thank you to for Tanazi for offering that. Um, on, It'll be the... for Fruity Spores too. Oh, Fruity wow. Spores and Sacred Three, all the websites that we have, the, that code does work. That's thank super you, awesome. brother. Appreciate it. This is really cool. Um, it's like I said, I I bought the. I remember getting the kit right around like when the pandemic started, I think. And um, it's so cool to um, see how far it's come in the last few years and how you're you're just like tackling all these different problems that people have uh you know faced and and then you're also like the spores part of it making that way easier to get because as someone who living lives in california it's not the easiest to get spores if you live in a state like california (laughs) so um just shout out to uh folks like yourself entrepreneurial folks and i really appreciate the uh knowledge that you share today and on your sites as well yeah thank you man i appreciate it support your local grower and be your local (laughs) grower Oh yeah. yeah. Thanks guys. Well, um, any last shout outs, I guess that before we go, check us out on Psychonauts TV on YouTube. I do a weekly show there with the DP and we talk psychedelics and doing big doses and therapy and brewing. Then, uh, Instagram to gardens and sacred three mushrooms. And then check out the websites, man. It's pretty spores and sacred three mushrooms and see what you think. And then I'm always here. Email me. Don't even have to buy anything from me. Just email me your questions. I answer them. I don't care. Very cool. Well, I had a really good time. Uh, Thanks for hanging out with us, Tanazi and JR. Um, As always, thanks to our community for joining us today. And as always, to say that phrase again, as always, we leave you with our last final shout out, which is growers Growers love. love. Peace.